Hey, we are here with Thinkers and Residents talking to South Australian youth about road safety. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most ideal, how would you rate road safety in South Australia today? I'd give it an 8. An 8? Um, I think pedestrians are quite safe using the roads. I think that cars, I think our laws um, you know, dictate very safe conditions for cars on the roads. I think the main problem is cyclists on the roads. I don't think that um, Australia has adequate, you know, precautionary measures taken for cyclists. So in saying that, to make or to be able to rate South Australia's road safety a 10, would it be the cyclist road yeah. laws that you would change? From personal experience, I think that's the, the main issue. Uh, it's not too bad. I find the city's a lot better because I'm actually from the country and there seems to be a lot of like, blind corners and roads that could be redone down there. There seems to be a lot more accidents and things. So what would you there. give it? Probably about seven. About a seven? Yeah. And what do you think, in your opinion, um, needs to change for you to be able to give it a ten? I guess more maintenance, I suppose, on a lot of the roads. Like, it could be in better conditions and things yeah. like that. Um, as far as like signage and all that goes, it's not too bad, I suppose. Uh, so a lot of young people should maybe be more educated or I'm not quite sure what they can do about that, but a lot of them just seem to be a bit gung-ho about it. When they get yeah. their first car with that bit of freedom, they just go out and do this. What values and principles do you think road safety needs to follow in South Australia? Um, people just aware of your surroundings and um, yeah, respect for pedestrians and drivers. I guess like not rushing everywhere all the time. Like you're going to get there right to your destination eventually. You're going to have to be straight away. People just have to realise it's it's not um, it's not this big thing like road rage and all that kind of thing. I mean, you know, it, it, it's we're all just sort of trying to get around. It's not like a massive city that we can. We've got uh, you know good enough roads for people to drive safely. It, you know, so I, I suppose yeah, just. You know, respect for other drivers. It's a pretty, um, pretty simple thing, really. You know. Definitely. What do you think needs to change on an individual family level? Oh, that's tough. I guess just parents are actually talking to their kids about it, and maybe talking to them about it properly, not just like giving them threats or warnings and things like that, but actually explaining it. And maybe stories that they've had from their youth as well. Yeah. Individual family level. I think that parents should be setting a greater, you know be greater role models for their children. I think, you know, a lot of parents, they show a lot of road rage on the roads and, you know, maybe don't practice safe driving themselves. And I mean, that, you know, obviously is carried on through the younger generation. So I think, you know, being better role models and setting a better example would be, you know, the greatest initiative to take. What do you think about on a community level? What do you think needs to change on that kind of level? Um, I think it's, I think it's, well, I mean, how involved is, is the community really? I mean, it's the police, you know, most of the time. I, I think, you know, um, well personally I think that in terms of road sa safety initiatives and all that sort of stuff and the police and all that kind of thing and the government and advertising, it's all pretty clear. It's, it's, it's got to be down to the individual, you know, and, and um, you know, people choose to drive too fast or to drive erratically or whatever and, you know, it, it's not really, I don't think that it's uh, the community should be playing more or less of a part. It, it's it's about the individual at the end of the day. Yeah, I guess I suppose a bit more awareness of what's going on. Yep. And being a bit more, I don't know, proactive in finding out information for themselves. So yeah. What about workplace? What do you think your workplace could do? Yeah, well, I have, I have to admit that sometimes if I'm on on my way to work and I'm late or something, then I'll like dash across the road when it's red. But um, so I guess things like that, just being aware that. Like people will follow your, you know, young people will follow your example. If you're just gonna jaywalk. Under the under the law, um, law of torts, like under Australian civil law, um, you actually are required to do everything on your property to ensure that your um, customers are safe. And so you are actually required to take away keys and things like that um, to ensure that you know people are safe. So I think that definitely needs to be you know implicated more. I'm not sure that that's a very um, you know commonly known um, law or anything like that under the Civil Liability Act, but you know. Um, I guess it just needs to be implemented more. Yes, yeah, so no, I don't really think it's the pub's responsibility. I think people, you know, should just be able to manage their stuff themselves and perhaps have a better system for late night transport and stuff like that so people have an option that don't, can't afford to catch a cab home to get home. And what about the government? What do you think the government could do to change? 
grow safety? Um, yeah, I guess things in primary schools, like making it cool to be road safe and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I think they're pretty good with, with advertising and that kind of thing. Like, um, you know, I, I, I learned my lesson after I was dished out a huge fine for speeding when I was a, a younger um, driver and since then I've been really sort of responsible and everything but um, mainly because I couldn't afford to be, you know, I couldn't finance um, being an idiot on the roads, you know, but um, I mean people are dying, you know, all the yeah. time so I think that that's pretty clear like through the news and and I actually think the government does a pretty good job and, and the police do a pretty good job enforcing it. What, what steps would you, are you willing to take to increase your road safety I awareness? mean, at the moment I'm only required to do 50 hours of driving practice. I would be happy to do more. I think I will be required to do more just so I get confident on the roads and, you know, can actually keep myself and others safe. Um, apart from that, myself, I guess just, you know, don't drink and drive. I actually take responsibility for myself and my actions. Well, I saw a little bit because um, probably about four years ago or something. I had a 19 year old cousin who died in a car crash and he wasn't drink driving or anything like that, it was just like a blind corner but still young kids will be young kids I suppose and stuff like that happens so I sort of tell people that story if someone wants to do something I'm, I'm not comfortable with that. We are now going to head to the city of Salisbury to talk to some kids there. Thinking about road safety in South Australia, what would you rate road safety on a 1 to 10 scale, 10 being the most ideal? I would probably put it at about a six. And why would that be? Um, well, we have been improving our road safety over the past few years, but I feel as though the media is using young drivers as a scapegoat to make it seem worse than it necessarily is. Hmm. I mean, I feel as though young drivers are targeted. I mean, sure, there's statistics to back up their theories, but I personally know a lot of safe young drivers yep. who don't do what the media portrays. A four? Yeah. Okay. What do you think needs to improve for you to rate South Australia a ten? Well, the um, campaigns that are out now, they're all negative and they're all being played too much, which means it becomes starting to become boring and it starts not to sink in as much anymore because if you start getting bored of it, it means it just you get bored and you start not paying much attention. How do you mean by the negative? Well, you've always got ones about people dying or um, about creeping and there are never any sort of positive messages about the good drivers and they always look at the bad drivers and Do you think that's because they're trying to make people realise that something needs to change drastically? That's probably true but also if they did look at the good drivers it would also change because they could show this is what is happening and this is what could happen okay. so it would be good to have both. Uh, about a seven. About a seven yeah. and why would that be? because of there's a lot of bad publicity but the roads aren't as bad as people make it out to be there's normally fairly safe drivers and everybody does the right thing the majority of the time yeah. what do you think we would need to change to make your rating a 10 um well definitely improve road maintenance it's kind of annoying when you're driving along and the roads are either too narrow or there's a dip that isn't shown up on a sign mm -hmm. because they're nasty to go along and yeah, yep. just road maintenance maybe a few better pedestrian areas to cross because when I was going to school there weren't exactly nice places to go for example in front of my school yep. quite a small area cool. and yeah it's mainly about education there's finding the right way to educate people you need to educate the drivers who have um, on their full license already, there's not enough education for them and you need to do education in schools to teach new drivers how to drive safely. And what values and opinions do you think need to guide road safety in South Australia? Probably especially when you're learning, patience would be one of them because the person who's teaching you, most people get taught by their parents and their parents don't have much patience and that's when they start getting sort of frustrated behind the wheel mm -hmm. and start getting confused. And also they need to have like determination as well that they want to want to succeed in getting positive road safety. People need to be more considerate and there needs to be more awareness of just self-awareness on the road mm -hmm. and there needs to be more awareness about other people and how, what their behaviours are on the road. Everyone has a role in improving road safety. What do you think needs to change on the individual family level? Uh, 
educate people at an earlier age to get into their heads that yeah. speeding's not good, that just maybe say a few road rules, because I personally, my parents, when they were driving, pointed out a few road safety tips and they've stuck with me most of my life. What about in, in a workplace organisation? Uh, they need to be more aware of their staff because a lot of workplaces are overworking at the moment so they're leaving the workplace exhausted so there just needs to be structures in place to get people who just to freshen up a little bit before mm -hmm. they leave so they're not working eight hours and then getting in the car driving home tired okay. and because that uh, fatigue is a major problem. What do you think the government can do to change? fix some of the roads, um, maybe put a few extra lights in where they need, take some out where they're not needed. For example, in the Salisbury area, there's a road where there's four sets of light, pretty much in quick succession, which is annoying. Um, a couple of years back, there was a bus that was at had to stop on the, bus on the train tracks and it got fine over. All oh, right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It was a while ago, but it still is a bad memory. You don't drive just yet, no. but what would you personally want to do to improve? How would you yourself improve road safety? Become more Isn't aware of the rules mm -hmm. that are out there and like start taking more note of what happens, how my parents drive and how what the right way to drive is. Uh, be more aware of cars around me, have my mobile off, not having the radio on and reduce any sort of destruction in the car as possible. So you just need to be more aware, watch what other people are doing and you'll be fine. So you can see other people wanting to merge lanes, you give them space. So it's just your awareness on the road. Excellent, thank you very much. And now we're in Port Lincoln on the Eyre Peninsula. Let's see what the kids here have to say about road safety. Troy, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most ideal, where do you see road safety in South Australia today? Uh, with my personal experience on farm and rural areas, I put it as a three. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen a lot of tragedies happen five in the last year um, of people I know due to poor road safety, um, poor education. So yeah, I'd like to give it more, but just, yeah, keep it as a three. Well, on that point, in your opinion, what do you think needs to change for road safety in South Australia for you to rate it a 10? Um, it needs a lot. You, I don't think I'll ever be able to class road safety as a 10 because mm. you can't have perfect you're always going to have you know outside variables which are going to affect it which are going to you know make the road conditions the driver's education mm. it's not going to be able to be a perfect but to get it up higher education um, better road conditions you know the council actually coming in and resealing the roads properly mm -hmm. um, getting the, the dirt roads created instead of just waiting until that you know completely you know, blown out and you can't drive on it. Um, education to an extent, you can educate as many people as much as you want, but they're just gonna ignore you if they want to. Um, you can give any, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't mm. make a drink. So Billy, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most ideal, where do you see road safety in South Australia today? I would say probably about a four. So I think there's a lot of room for improvement, but I think people also take a fair bit of responsibility for road safety for themselves, so they can get it up higher if they want to. Most definitely, and on that same uh, wavelength, in your opinion, where what do you think needs to change in road safety in South Australia for you to rate it a 10 on this scale? Um, there's probably a few areas. I think people need to sit up and take more notice of the things that perhaps don't cause accidents in the first place but can lead to more serious injury or death, like mm -hmm. drink driving or not wearing a seatbelt, those sorts of things. Also, um, technology of cars. I know myself, I have a 20 going on 22 year old car and probably having a newer vehicles would be a lot safer. What values and principles do you think will guide or need to guide road safety in the future? I think it comes down to equality, like there has to be the same set of rules for everyone and everybody mm. has to follow them because otherwise it's not going to work and also it's about taking personal responsibility, people have to step up to make it safer. Probably just to respect everyone equally like because old people go slowly and young people go fast doesn't make them any different. 
Um, yeah, but probably education and respect, yeah. Everyone needs to be like aware and equal for everyone. Same rules go for apply for everyone. Everyone plays a role in improving road safety. What do you think needs to change on the individual family level? Um, I think everyone just needs to take a bit more responsibility to what they're doing and knowing that the small things they do on the road could affect other people. Mm -hmm. Just, I, I think more education needs to be done personally. I think. Um, what kind of education? I think they should have driver's education in school. I think that would be a really good way to go. And then also, but as that's not available sort of thing, I think um, there's a few programs you can do outside of school. Um, I think you have to pay for them, but I think, yeah, a lot of people should take that up because it's a really good opportunity to learn more sort of thing. On a family level, um, I think a lot comes down to the parents. And what about in the community level? I think particularly in country areas like we live in, uh, sporting clubs have uh -huh. a big role to play in reducing the, particularly the drink driving culture because they're in areas where perhaps there isn't any public transport and they do have a big culture of drinking after the game. I mean you can only put so much awareness out there before people just start ignoring it um, but you know you can you know you got your sporting groups you know more often than not up at you know from the country you know you play footy you have a few drinks and you drive home because there's no police you know okay. almost no police presence up there so you, you feel like you can get away with anything so if there was a higher police presence or if the you know the sporting clubs were you know more you know cracked down more on you know their players driving home intoxicated then you know it should you know slowly be able to change the 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 group the, the community mentality t as to you know drink driving not wearing seat belts if you start it from somewhere they respect then they'll bring that through and what about the workplace in uh, organization level um I think probably in terms of road safety, if, if you've got workers who have access to company cars, mm -hmm. obviously they have to be in as good condition as possible and there needs to be policies and systems in place that people know how to be safe and make sure they follow their rules. Workplace organisation, if they need to make it safer, like if you're late for work, you know, your boss needs to just be like, no worries, make sure you get here and get here safely. Especially for shift workers, they need to take the time to step back and look at how they're going to get home safely, you know, whether they rely on public transport instead of driving when they're tired or driving when they're not fit to drive, which will make the road safer for everybody else on them. What do you think needs to change on the government level? They need to really, you know, step up and get done what needs to be done. They, you know, at this point in time, they're resealing roads that don't need it. Roads that do need it aren't getting touched. They're saying it's because it's, you know, part of their you know, regime. They have a, a roster system where, you know, even if it doesn't need it, it, it gets done. That needs to change. They need to look at each road individually and say, if this road gets to this level, we need to reseal it. Um, it's the same with the, the dirt roads. If they, you know, you know, during harvest is the worst time for the dirt roads, oh. you know, up in the middle of their peninsula. They just get, you know, the trucks, constant use, just really wears the roads down and it needs to be graded before and after. So then, you know, if you grade it before, it's safe for the trucks and, you know, you should limit any of the, you know, conditions which, you know, normally associate with harvest, like, you know, blowouts or holes in the road. Oh. Um, and then greater afterwards so then you know normal traffic isn't going to be impeded by the you know the wear and tear on the road that's been caused by all the trucks. The government's kind of always changing things they're, they're always going to be making up new laws always thinking up new ways to try and make people not be as dangerous mm -hmm. you know. there's always you know something you can do and there's always something that you can't do if that makes sense. Um, we'll probably make it more yeah, probably lift the age of when you can get your license, mm -hmm. and then yeah, fix up the government can fix up all the roads and rules, and yeah, make a few more rock, like rules stricter. I suppose it just like I, I suppose they have systems and stuff in place for fixing roads or just like I know like a lot of our highways and stuff around here are just single lane, like, not single lane, but just two mm -hmm. lanes. If it was double lane the whole way and stuff like that, like they could just put a bit of like I suppose they've spent a lot of money keeping roads, like the upkeep of roads, but actually like improving them would be better instead of just keeping them okay. 
Um, yeah, well, I think they are doing a bit a good job right now. I think stricter laws could be put on like mobile phone usage, um, drink driving, like the main ones, and not wearing a seatbelt. The little things that people just seem to negate where they're actually really important. Um, so more like emphasis on education mm -hmm. for that, especially at a younger age, but um, also for people who haven't been told that for a while, um, the older generation need to know that as well. What actions are you personally prepared to take to improve road safety? Well, I suppose I'd just try and like stay to the speed limit and stay conscientious of what's going on around me, I suppose, just trying to stay safe. I don't know, I'd just, I'd like to, I'd drive responsibly, I'd, pay attention to road rules and I don't think that's about all you can do as a driver. One thing that I need to work on is being more attentive, like I do look at my phone and mm -hmm. stuff um, and I like I don't have to do that, I can easily stop and I probably should, yeah. Um, I don't know, just be a bit more accountable and just, yeah, take a bit more care for what I'm doing because knowing it could, you know, a small mistake I could make could ruin someone's whole family's life, so. If you always keep, kind of have that in the front of your mind, I think everyone will be a better driver. Definitely. Thank you very much. No worries. For more information about thinkers and residents, head to the website.